as we all know, the Elias Lindholm trade was just the beginning of the trade season. And the Flames have one of the hottest commodities, one of the best assets going into the trade season. And that, of course, is Chris Tanev. And there's been a recent report that has shown that there are three very likely suitors for the Flames stud defenseman. Welcome to Flames Digest. I'm Mark Griffith. If you're new here and you're a big fan of the Flames, make sure you subscribe because 94% of the people watching are not subscribed. So if you could just do me that favor of hitting that subscribe if you want to stay up to date with all the latest news, updates, rumors, reports regarding the Flames, that would be just fantastic and I appreciate it. But like I said, there has been a new report out, and it's not by just anyone, but it's actually by the man himself. Boom! That's right. We got an Elliot Friedman bomb, as he has named three Canadian teams that would all be looking into Chris Tanev. And the first one that he mentioned is, of course, the Ottawa Senators. I know, I was a little surprised by this one, too. The Sens obviously aren't making a push for the playoffs. Uh, it looks like they'll very likely be out of the playoff picture this year. They're still rebuilding. I know it's been what seems like forever. I apologize to all Sens fans out there. That is just agon agonizing. But here's what Friedman said. So he said, Tanev makes perfect sense for a guy to be on Ottawa's radar, and he is. I don't know what the possibility is at this time. I think Chris Tanev would probably prefer a playoff scenario this year. And obviously the Sens aren't a playoff team. Uh, but we'll see about the future, but I do think he's one of the teams on the radar. So it's very interesting that Friedman would name a team that, you know, isn't a contender, isn't necessarily making a push for the playoffs. And I agree, most free agents that are big assets at the deadline want to go to contenders. So for Friedman to drop the Sens, that's crazy news. I mean, obviously the Sens did a similar thing last year when they kind of shocked the hockey world and picked up Jacob Chikrin from Arizona for what seemed like pennies at the time. And I, I think at the time, Ottawa was still somewhat pushing for the playoffs. Obviously, they did not end up making it. Um, but it could be a similar thing this year. Maybe they're really just trying to build for that future. But I don't know. The future used to look bright in Ottawa. Now they just can't get the pieces together. But still, for Elliot Friedman to drop the Sens for Tanev, I think it's interesting. A lot of people actually in the comments and just all over social media, all the forums and everything, have been saying that the Sens are a likely trade suitor for either Tanev, Hannafin, or even Markstrom. And a, a return would include, obviously, some sort of first-round pick or picks and maybe a Josh Norris or one of the other forwards that just isn't quite panning out for the Sens right now. Um, another thing that I want to mention, um, going into tonight's game against Boston for the Flames, these are the defensive pairings. And obviously, we see there, the new acquisition of Braden Pahal gets in. That's fantastic. But you look at the second line there, Hannafin and Tanev playing together. And I think that's really, really good. I mean, if they want to showcase them as a pair, how strong they are, just how much they gel and all the chemistry they have, how good they play together, both in the offensive end and then most importantly, the defensive end, I think it's great. And maybe they could even ship them out as a pair. Is Ottawa a possibility for one of those teams that they could be shipped to as a pair? Absolutely. I mean, they can afford it. They, if they, they can afford it if they give the right players back. Obviously, Ottawa's not in a good cap situation, but if they were to give away a bunch to get these two defensemen, I think it's it's a possibility. I mean, again, I'm just kind of piggybacking on what Elliot Friedman's talking about. He knows more than me, but I don't know. Do I really see the Sens as the biggest trade suitor for Tanev or Hannafin or Markstrom or anyone else? Not necessarily, but it's not out of the question. But let's move on to the next team named, and that, of course, sticking in Ontario, is the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, the Flames and Leafs, they have made trades in the past. You think of the Dion Phaneuf trade. Is Phaneuf a similar player to Tanev? Kinda. I mean, a lot of people think back and don't think of Phaneuf as a fantastic player, but think of his time on the Flames. He was amazing. His time on the Leafs, very underrated. He was the captain. He wasn't exactly what they were looking for, but he still was solid, solid for the Sens in their playoff run in 2017, and then kind of petered out with the Kings towards the end of his career. But regardless, Tree Living is their GM now, obviously, and he originally wanted to actually pick up Zadorov and Tanev, players he was familiar with er earlier in the season before Zadorov became a Canuck. I know, it seems like the Flames just deal with the Canucks and Leafs all the time. <laughs> it's almost tiring at this point, but... 
they're definitely a possibility and these are the Leafs defensive pairings that they just that they've been displaying lately obviously they played the Islanders last night didn't do too hot and their defense might be a big part of it they have loads of left sh- left hand shooting defensemen Tanev's right he would slot in perfectly I know quite a few Leafs fans and they are not pleased with Timothy Lilligren. he is a bit of a liability on the back end and I do feel for Leafs fans when it comes to his play but you get Tanev in there and it's so possible. I mean, you look, they have Geo and Brody, both former Flames. The Leafs have proven that they can win a series with a couple former Flames at defense. Maybe Hannafin and Tanev will be the thing there too. The only problem with the Leafs is obviously they do not have a bunch of draft capital. They have no second round picks for the foreseeable future. Would they cough up their first round pick to bring in Tanev, get him to his hometown team? I'm not 100% sure. The Leafs have done so much of that lately and it hasn't worked out great for them. For Calgary, I'd love it if we could get another first-round pick. Just keep bringing them in. My goodness, it's raining down first-round picks in Calgary if we can get that one too. Or just if we get a first-round pick for Tanev and Hannafin and then maybe even Markstrom or another goalie or whoever else, my goodness, that would be fantastic. The Leafs, I don't know if they're the best trade partners for the Flames right now. Um, They... Seem to make a move at the deadline every year, so it's definitely in the realm of possibility, but I think it'd be hard for the Leafs to give the Flames what they want in return. But it's just interesting that they're one of the three big Canadian suitors uh, that have been reported lately. And the last one is, of course, I talk about them, it seems, every single video, but the Vancouver Canucks. This one, I think, makes the most sense out of the ones that were reported after that big Friedman bomb. Tanev used to play in Vancouver. He used to play with Quinn Hughes. Quinn Hughes, probably the Norse front runner right now. The only thing that's a little bit interesting about everyone saying like, oh, Tanev goes to the Canucks, he plays with Hughes, is that Hughes and Philip Hronick right now are pretty much the best D pairing in the entire NHL. They have been fantastic this year. Look at their offensive stats. Look at their plus minus. Just look at how the Canucks are doing. I mean, it's not ideal for us Flames fans, but I mean, personally for me, I'd rather have the Canucks be good than the Oilers, but that's just me. That's just me. Um, If we were to make another trade with them, well, we already got their first round pick from this year. Um, We've already taken two very good prospects from them and their one guy who wasn't working out with the coach. It's not out of the realm of possibility though. It could be a future first round draft pick or just a selection of higher round draft picks, second, thirds, whatever it is that could be potentials to come back to Calgary and that that being said though if I'm Vancouver I test the waters with Lindholm first obviously they're playing really really well you want to see how Lindholm does if you go all in too early and then the team doesn't gel as much I mean if it ain't broke don't fix it right that's what I've found with so many of these contenders that have won the cups lately that they haven't added a ton at the trade deadline they more so like to do cap circumvention Um, which is way worse than the trade deadline. I love the trade deadline. Not a big fan of cap circumvention, but either way, it's, it's, it's fun regardless. But the one thing I will say about Tanev on the Canucks is that, like I said, he's played there and he's actually performed well in the playoffs. You know, he scored a big overtime goal for them. I know Tanev scoring goals. It's, it's a sight to see. I love Chris Tanev, the one tooth wonder so much, but he, he is not going to be a chemistry chemistry problem in Vancouver I mean I think Tanev would fit in in any team there's I don't think there's a single team in the NHL that wouldn't want Chris Tanev in their lineup I mean he does not give the puck away so smart in the defensive end whether it's how he's tracking the puck when the other team's you know dumping it in or forechecking I mean he's just perfect at analyzing the forecheck he's great through the neutral zone literally the least giveaways in the NHL percentage-wise the least giveaways out of all defensemen in the NHL in the neutral zone. I think any team would love to have that. The other thing about the Canucks is if you look at the advanced stats, they kind of get bailed out by Thatcher Demko a little bit. I mean, they're scoring millions of goals, so it doesn't matter. I mean, a 6-5 win is a win, right? But they do get bailed out by Thatcher Demko quite a bit. And Tanev would be statistically the best in terms of he's faced the least amount of or, or given up the least amount of high danger chances um, by the opposing team. So if he's preventing those from happening, maybe that makes Demko's life easier and maybe the Canucks become that much better. 
Either way, it sounds like I'm just selling Tanev to whichever team is watching this video. But in reality, I love Tanev. I think it would be amazing if he could stay here. But the way the rebuild, the retooling, the con ploy is going, I mean, it just looks like Tanev is on his way out the door. And we should try to get back as much as we possibly can, just like the Lindholm trade. If Conroy can pull off another trade like that, where the Flames just get so much in return, it feels like Christmas in February again. I mean, that would just be absolutely ideal. And no matter what, I love Chris Tanev and I love the Flames. So I just want what's best for both parties. Um, last thing I'll just say before the end of this video is at the time that this video goes up, the Flames will be playing very soon. I mean, by the time you're watching, maybe the game's on, maybe it's already happened. But either way, I'm super excited to watch it. Uh, it should be amazingly fun. I really hope Hannafin and Tanev do get shown together, showcased maybe as a pair to pull off one of the biggest blockbusters in recent memory. But um, it'll be super fun to watch the game. Super fun to see how Kuzmenko does, how Pahal does, how these new lines will gel. Will the Flames buy into, you know, the more of the master plan or are they just going to make a push for the playoffs? I think it all starts with this Eastern road trip and it all starts tonight in Boston. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it to the end, please make sure you subscribed. You subscribe if you're not already. Um, we have a wonderful community building here of Flames fans and a couple other fan bases have been getting involved and you guys are actually hilarious. Your engagement's so funny. The last video I said, you know, do I look more like Stage and Sam Bennett? Now we're getting Ryan Leslie, Ryan Huska, you know, in the mix. And it is hilarious to read your guys' comments. I will never take offense to anything like that. So I really appreciate your guys' engagement. Thank you so much for watching and just supporting the channel. We're growing so fast. And I genuinely, I mean this from my heart, I really appreciate each and every single one of you. So thank you for watching the video and enjoy the game tonight. Go Flames, go!